All right, so we've spent some time working with conditional expectation, and now we're finally going to see the, the reason why we've done that. So let's think about uh, our setup here. So we suppose that we want to estimate uh, some function of theta, or just theta itself in the simpler case. And suppose we have an unbiased estimator of that function of theta or theta, and we'll call it, uh, say, t of x. Now, if we find a sufficient statistic, say, s of x, then we can make our estimator even better, meaning we can make it even lower variance um, by using the following theorem. So basically the, basically, the idea here is that we can start out with a rough or a crude estimator and get a better one. So we start out with um, an estimator t of x, and it has to be unbiased, so it's an unbiased estimator of tau of theta, and we have a sufficient statistic. Then if we define t star of x to be a new estimator, we want to define it to be the expected value uh, of t of x, the original estimator, conditioned on the sufficient statistic s of x. Uh, this will uh, be an unbiased estimator and will also have a nice relationship for the variance, namely the variance of the new estimator will be less than or equal to the variance of the original. Oops, the original without the star. And even better, um, this estimator, t star of x, will be some function, say phi, of the sufficient statistic. And so it'll be a function of the sufficient statistic, and the variance will strictly be lower than the variance of uh, t of x, unless t star and t of x are the same. So it could turn out that you take the expectation of the, uh, of the original estimator conditioned on a sufficient statistic, and you just get the original estimator out. In that case, of course, the variances will be the same, so you'll have the equal to case. But if you get something new out, the variance of, the, of t star will be lower. So now that we have some conditional expectation tools, the proof of this is is pretty easy, pretty nice. So let's start with the first part, which is that t star of x is unbiased. Well, of course, we should take the expectation of t star to, to figure this out. And we can notice, well, just by definition, that's the expected value of the expectation of the original t of x, that's the original estimator, conditioned on the sufficient statistic. Right? This here is how we defined t star. Well, we showed uh, in a previous video that this expectation is just the expected value of t of x. Right? It's the expected value of what you have here. That's coming from this property of conditional expectation that if we took the expectation of the conditional expectation of x given y, we would get the expected value of x. By assumption, in this Rao Blackwell theorem, we've assumed that we start out with an unbiased estimator. So this is unbiased, that means we get tau of theta. And if you read this whole line, that tells us that the expected value of the new estimator, t star, is equal to tau of theta, and so by definition that means it's unbiased. Well, a few videos back we had this law of total variance, and so we'll use that now. And if you remember that says that the variance of t of x will be equal to the expectation of the variance of t of x conditioned on s of x. plus the variance of the expectation of t of x conditioned on s of x. 
Now we'll notice that each of these components will be non-negative. And in particular, uh, this component will be non-negative because it's the expectation of a variance. While the variance is non-negative, if we take its expectation, it will be non-negative. Non and so that means we can write, uh, we can drop one of these terms and, and have something that's uh, less than, which means the original quantity here will be greater than. So we'll choose to drop the expectation of the variance term, and we'll just be left with the variance of the expectation of the original estimator, t of x, then conditioned on s of x. And notice that this here is just our t star. All right, so we have t star here which means that this is equal to the variance of t star. And that proves it, right? That we've just shown that the variance of the original estimator using the law of total variance is greater than the variance of the new estimator.